Prior to entering the building, you will need to check in with Safe Access. Safe Access is an application that allows you to do your own COVID-19 screening. Simply use your phone or computer to go on the website and answer the questions regarding symptoms and temperature. Once Safe Access gives you the green light, show the screen at the door and you're all set. If you cannot access Safe Access for whatever reason, there will still be screening available at the door. You also must wear a mask to enter the building. There is a wide variety of acceptable masks to wear, including cloth and 95s and medical masks. Bended masks, bandanas, and any other items that don't fully cover above your nose and below your chin are prohibited. If your first period class is in room 103 to rooms 115, then you are entering through the front left door. If your first period class is in room 119 to 127, then you are entering through the front right door. You can't touch this. If your first period class is anywhere on the third floor, you're entering through the south tower doors. If your first period class is in room 202 to room 228, or is the RTC armory or ceramics, you're entering through the north tower doors. If your first period class is on the fourth floor, is in the PE gyms, or the music classroom in room 350, you're entering through the on the Detroit side through the north side doors. If your first period class is on the second floor in the back hallway, rooms 234 to 271, you're entering through the door in the back on Detroit, closest to the commons. And if you have a classroom either in the black box or rooms 159 to 170, you're entering through the traditional Detroit side door on the south side. Now, let's talk about logistics. Upon arriving at the school, make sure to enter through the assigned door closest to your classroom. Oh, you can't enter through this door. You gotta enter through the door closest to your first period class. Doors will open 15 minutes before the start of your first period. The morning starts at 8 o'clock and the afternoon starts at 1225. Once inside, follow the one-way signs to get to your first class. Stop. Students are not allowed to use this staircase. You have to use the staircases on the side that correspond to where you're going. The main staircase is off limits to students to enforce one-way hallways. Take the back and side stairs instead while making sure to follow the one-way signs. Passing periods are five minutes long, so there's no time to stop and talk with friends. Restrooms are open, but are limited to five people at a time, so plan accordingly. If you miss your classroom, you will have to follow the one-way hallways all the way back, so be sure to pay attention and plan out your path during the first week. If you get confused, don't worry, administrators will be posted all around the school to answer any questions you might have. Make sure to pay attention to signs and follow the flow of traffic. These new rules are crucial to keeping everyone safe. Your teacher will communicate with the admins, monitoring the hallways, and let you know when it is safe to use the bathroom. 
Class, like most other areas of the school, maintain social distancing in classrooms as well. Find your seat and be prepared and ready for class. The distance in masks may make it difficult to hear at times, so side conversations and added distractions should be kept to a minimum. Can you use chapstick in class? Yes, but just for a reasonable amount of time. There's no need to be applying it like this. Can you drink water in class? Absolutely. Again, just be respectful of those around you. It's your job to be prepared for class, so make sure your computer is charged and bring your charger just in case. Do your part and sanitize your hands when entering and exiting class. Teachers have a plexiglass divider at their desks for an additional safety precaution, so respect their space. Teachers will be diligent about disinfecting all surfaces before, between, and after classes. I'm uh, John Nemolsky. I'm one of the assistant principals at East High School. Uh, my name is Sean Anderson, and I am the assistant principal for culture, equity, and engagement. So yes, grab-and-go still exists. It's only grab-and-go, so there's no eating in the building at all. So the grab-and-go will actually be on the back on Detroit, like out of the cafeteria. We are asking people to eat outside, so that's part of the reason why it's back on Detroit. There's all the tables back there. Um, no, tutorials will be, tutorials will, will continue to be virtual. Uh, that kind of depends. So some counselors have accommodations and, they're, and they won't be seeing students in person at all. We'd prefer that if you have an appointment with your counselor, it, it takes place virtually during your asynchronous time. And that, that goes along with kind of what happens at the end of classes in the morning before the afternoon group comes in. That it's, it's really easy as a student to kind of have that after conversation with the teacher, but it's really important that everybody leaves so that we can actually do our safety protocols and sanitize rooms and spaces. So I know that tutorial space is a, is a need, but at the same time, we have to focus on the safety too. Monday the 25th, we'll all be in the building together. Tuesday and Wednesday will be remote, and then Thursday we'll be back in the building the same way, and then off again, obviously, on Friday. And then we'll all be back on a regular four-day-a-week schedule starting on the 1st. We'll start school at 8. We won't open the doors until 7.45. Um, and then the afternoons, uh, class starts at 12.25, and we won't open the doors till 12.10, right? It's really going to be like 100 kids, just over 100 kids per door. Please, please charge your Chromebook. Could you talk about how we can recognize COVID symptoms and what we should do and who we should tell if we've been exposed or tested positive? Yeah, so COVID has so many symptoms. Some of them are very simple, just like a common cold. Like you might have a scratchy throat, a runny nose, you might just feel tired. Some of them are more severe, like a fever or excessive coughing, difficulty breathing. Um, one of the big ones to look for is loss of taste or smell, and that's pretty indicative of getting um, a positive COVID test. So um, if you do think you've been exposed, if you're experiencing any symptoms such as a headache, nausea, nausea um, if you're losing your sense of taste or smell, anything like that, um, you want to just tell any staff member because they will tell me um, and then we'll kind of go from there. We do have testing available. It's free for everybody in the community as well as all of the DPS students and faculty. Um, and you can get that through COVID check and we highly recommend getting tested every two weeks. It's totally free. And that way, even if you're not having any symptoms, we might know or we might find out that you're positive um, without you even knowing, which would help us be able to quarantine people appropriately. Yeah, so for staff, we send out emails every month that give them different options for our employee assistance program, um, where they can connect confidentially with a counselor. Um, there have also been some colleges around that are offering free counseling for educators. Um, for students, you guys can check out the Denver Health Clinic. They've got um, psychologists and psychiatrists there. We also have our mental health clinic in the back. 
um, and then our counselors are available as well. Um, we also recommend just reaching out to a trusted adult in the building. They can always get you connected with the right resource. Um, can you talk about some reliable sources about that have information on COVID yeah, so probably the biggest one is going to be the CDC. They update regularly. They've got a ton of good information with links to studies. So you can also see where they're getting their facts and figures from. Um, you can also look at the CDPHG or the Colorado Department of Public Health and Education. They've got a great website as well as the Denver Health website. You can always come and talk to me if you want information. Um, and then if you go on Google Scholar and look for peer-reviewed studies regarding COVID, there's a ton of really good ones out there and those are all trusted sources. Um, so our Denver Health Clinic that is here in school is actually going to be able to offer testing. They won't offer it in the school building quite yet, um, but they can do a telehealth appointment if you start feeling ill at school or if you're at home and not feeling well. Um, and then they can set you up with a free test through Denver Health. It's completely free of charge. Um, and then you get to talk one-on-one -on -one with a doctor through Denver Health as well. Um, all you have to do is have your parents fill out a consent form so that we can get you set up with them. So there's no testing requirement that we do recommend you get tested every two weeks, especially since it's free through COVID check. There's no reason not to. And there's a ton of sites throughout the city. Um, so we would love for people to get tested every two weeks if possible. Yeah, so we definitely need you all to tell us if you have COVID or know of somebody that has COVID or if somebody's family member does, because that way we can quarantine people appropriately. So when we do find out that either a family member or a student or a staff member has COVID, we immediately start contact tracing and we want to find out how long they've spent in a room with people, how many people they've been in close contact with, and then if we determine that people need to isolate or quarantine or that we suggest they go get tested, we'll start contacting people immediately. I just want you guys to know that school is going to look very different, but it's going to be okay and we're doing everything we can to keep everybody safe here and we want you guys to feel good about coming into school. If you ever have any questions, if you're ever concerned about anything, come visit me, talk to one of the counselors, talk to one of the deans, ask your questions. We're here to answer them and we want you guys to get answers if you need them to feel comfortable being here.